let's take a look at simpler in classic mode. So I'm over here on this final track and this is an instance of simpler. I have just dropped a sample right in here and I have this on classic mode. So I'm gonna open this up so you can see things a little bit clearer. Zoom in. So I have set the start and stop markers to just a very specific part of this file. I have the track armed as well, so I'll just quickly play some stuff. So this file is currently being warped, which means that again, pitch and time will be divorced. So as I uh, play different pitches, the time will be the same. If I take this off of warp here, playing a high note, I'll go even higher. I'll play a very low note. You can see how long it's taking that file to play back. So having things on warp is very different than having them off of warp. And then you can again choose very specific warping algorithms depending on the type of file that you have and then you still do have these sort of creative parameters within, to, within which to carve the sound out. So as it is, it's just basically playing back this clavinet-esque sound. And maybe that's the extent of what I want. I just want this small piece of audio being played back at whatever pitch I create. Uh, but let's take this even further and see what there is to see here. I can put this on loop. I'm going to shorten it so that we can quickly go through the sample. You can see it's just gonna immediately loop for me here. I could change where this is starting. So now if I play this at different pitches, it's a very different instrument than what I started with. I can do more to it. I can have it start in one place and then loop a little bit later by adjusting these start and loop parameters. It's actually pretty interesting. I'm going to open this up a little bit. I can choose to re-trigger the envelopes. You can hear that they're all sort of in sync in that respect. And when I have this on, they are not synced up because I am re-triggering the envelope whenever a new voice is being played. I can adjust the number of voices, six. Obviously, if we go to 32, we're going to uh, be maxing out our CPU. And you can set this to one if you want it to be this, uh, if you wanted it to be a monophonic instrument at that point in time. So there's some more options that become available to us, which is this fade parameter. We can create a smooth sort of transition in and out of where the sample is repeating itself, but that is only available to us when warp is off. So limitations and options, depending on how you want to have the sample be played back. So here, this is the backside of Simpler and I could get to it by hitting the controls option, but I can also just open this up so I can see the sample properties and the control panel simultaneously. So Simpler is very powerful and also kind of a gateway into sound design if you haven't gone down that rabbit hole quite yet. And inside of the device, we have a filter, an LFO, and two envelopes which are assigned. And they're really easy to use and to get creative with right off the bat. So here is a filter. I'm just gonna play a note. Turn this all the way down to begin with. So I could set a filter really easily. I've got different bands I could choose. High pass, low pass, notch, band pass, so on and so forth. 
I can swap these out for different emulations of hardware filters or just go with the digital clean one here. You can see that when I uh, choose one of the hardware emulations, I also have this drive knob where I can uh, distort things here, add some more gain as well. Moving over to the LFO here, I have some attack settings and offset settings depending on how I want this LFO to react. And if you haven't gotten deeply into synthesis or the basic mechanics behind synthesis, uh, an LFO is a control signal, which is going to allow me to use characteristics of that signal, such as frequency, or it's, it's, it's like a pendulum swinging, if you will, and assign those to other parameters on this device. So for instance, I'm going to choose filter. I'll pull this all the way up. And right now I have it set to an eighth note. I can, I can set it to a specific frequency itself. You can hear that filter opening and closing now. So you can't visually see this, but it's doing something like this. Or I could set it to a BPM. So if I play this very low, I'm getting something which is very much like a wobble bass. Uh, so I can do this with pitch. I can do this with volume. Turn this down so it's a little bit easier to hear. Tremolo effect, I can do this with pan. So four destinations for this LFO right off the bat. Um, I can have it kind of come in a bit slower if I want to by changing this attack setting here. I could change the shape of the wave, most um, wobble bases. Our saws. Over here on the envelope settings, I have an amp envelope and a pitch envelope. So again, if you're not so familiar with the basics of synthesis, an envelope is going to shape the evolution of a sound from the moment the sound starts to the moment the sound ends. So I have the option, we'll just use amplitude here, I'll have this come in quite slowly before it hits full volume. And we also have decay sustain release happening as well. So we're going to shape the way and timing of how this sound goes from silence to full volume. Let's set this at around two seconds. You can hear it happening. I can set the release. We're going to have this take a very long time to release here. So there's a lot of design opportunities and potential just inside of Simpler taking a single sample and turning it into its own instrument. This was originally a clavinet sound and now we have created something which is way more spacey, more abstract and customized.